Good afternoon. This is the Natural History Museum here in Rotterdam. I work there as a curator. A day at work at the museum can pass without much excitement. But on June 5th, 1995, a loud bang against the glass building changed my life and that of a duck. No. Here we go. I looked out of the window and saw a dead duck laying on its belly. Next to the dead duck was a live duck. And please pay attention, both are of the male sex. Then this happened. The live duck mounted the dead duck and started to copulate. I'm a biologist, I'm an ornithologist, I said. This is something new. One is dead, <laughs> one is alive, both are male. Must be homosexual necrophilia. I, so I took observations and I concluded that it was something special. After 75 minutes, I had seen enough and collected the duck for the museum. And I checked if the victim was indeed of the male sex. And here you see a um, rare slide of a duck's penis. <laughs> so what do you do when you see something new to science? You publish it. <laughs> it, it took me about six years to uh, write it up, but finally I did it. Here is the situation again. <laughs> A is my office. B is the place where the duck hit the glass, and C is from where I observed it. <laughs> and here are the ducks again. This was back in 2001. I, um, I think about six people noticed this paper, and that was it. <laughs> and then I got an email from somebody from Harvard University saying that I'd won a prize. The Ig Nobel Prize, and something, that's something very interesting. Ig Nobel Prizes are given each year to 10 scientists who first make people laugh and then make them think. And the prizes are intended to celebrate the unusual, honor the imaginative and spur people's interest in science, medicine and technology. This is an Ig Nobel Prize, a nice piece of paper that tells that you won one signed by real Nobel laureates. And these real Nobel laureates give the prize to you on stage in Harvard University. And they give you 60 seconds <laughs> to say thank you. Until now, about 200 people have won the Ig Nobel Prize. And this is André Geim, who won the Ig Nobel Prize in 2000 for an interesting study in which he levitated frogs by means of magnets. And 10 years later, André Geim won another prize for another kind of work. He won the Nobel Prize. So you see, there's hope for Ig Nobel Prize winners. <laughs> Winning this Ig Nobel Prize changed my life. People started sending me all kinds of duck-related stuff. <laughs> I have a, a huge collection now. All kinds of things. And the, um, it also made me realize that when you um, put some humor into science, and especially into science communication, you can reach a lot more people than just your peers. And I'm going to give you uh, an example of something that we've 
done in the past that we, we've uh, uh, erected the uh, European Bureau of Improbable Research here in Rotterdam. And here's a piece of research that really attracted my attention a couple of years ago about two British doctors who noticed a decline in the number of patients hosting pubic lice. And they blamed it for the habit of, uh, they blamed it to the habit of removing one's pubic hair. And this is the lead author, Nicola Armstrong, who did this work, it's brilliant. And here is a pubic lice. It's a small insect, just visible with the bare eye. Here's one seen from a microscope. And their habitat is pubic hair. They also live on the hair on the belly. This is the, uh, the navel of a 50-year-old man with scattered around it a few pubic lice. But this is what they really like. Good old pubic hair. <laughs> but what? But what they... What do they come across these days? Just a mere landing strip. <laughs> as a biologist, as a biologist, I say this is habitat destruction. <laughs> and I, I, I looked in the collection of the Natural History Museum in Rotterdam. I checked all the insects we have. We have about 100,000 insects and we couldn't find one single pubic louse. So I called the audience, I rang up a few reporters, I said, please, send me the last of the pubic lice for the collection. It worked. I mean, this got massive attention. <laughs> the result was a huge amount of publicity, and just a few pubic lice. And we, ke we keep them in, the, in, a, in a very special place in the museum, in about seven jars. And these are uh, the last of the pubic lice. If you, I mean, you're in the age that sexually active, if you happen to have some with you, <laughs> I'm here all day. <laughs> to conclude, I want to invite you all to join me on June 5th, 19th of 2012, be at the Natural History Museum in Rotterdam at five minutes to five, five minutes to six. This is when the duck hit the glass. And we commemorate the fate of the duck. <laughs> what we also do, and this is the serious part, we discuss new ways to prevent birds from colliding with windows. And afterwards, we have a duck dinner. <laughs> well, thank you. Need some help with that? Kees Moelieker. Thank you very much. Kees, you, you are actually on the board of the Ig Nobel Prize now, right? So that should also make it easier for you to get a, a second one, perhaps. You're on the jury. Uh, well, th that should be a self-nomination. It's not done. It's not done. I'm sorry. But, Just but one. you help organize yeah. the events now. We help organizing the events. And uh, with the Bureau in Rotterdam, we expand our network and we ask people to send in nominations. Uh, you can nominate yourself as well. And um, well, we've, we've just given 10 prizes uh, three weeks ago and uh, we are now selecting for next year. So who knows? All right, go for it. Thank you very Thank much. Kees Moedeker.